Welcome to On the Waterfront. I'm your host, Mariah Riggs, director of the Main Street Landing Performing Arts Center. And today, I'm really excited to welcome the safety team to my show to talk about all the wonderful work they do in the Burlington area. Um, before we get into a conversation about all the wonderful workshops and programs that you do, I'd like to introduce the people that we have on the show today. Uh, we'll start out with uh, Jesse. Hi, I'm Jesse Anderson, and I am an ESD trainee, and I also work as an HR generalist for the city of Burlington. Okay. Um, my name is Dr. Christine de Blasio. I'm a psychologist who's been in the field for over 30 years, working with uh, specializing in trauma, working with trauma survivors. I'm also a fifth degree black belt in Kempo Jitsu Karate, and one of the co-founders of the safety team. And I'm Geneviève, or Jenny Henry. I am the executive director for the safety team and one of the lead uh, trainer and instructor. And you also have um, some martial arts experience as well. Yes, I'm a black belt in Kenpo Jiu Jitsu. All right. So um, really quickly, um, Christine, you're one of the co-founders of the safety team. And so can you tell us how the idea for this all started? Well, like many things in my life, it was kind of a happy accident. Uh, my kids had started training in the martial arts, oh gosh, over 20 years ago. And uh, they invited me to join, and like a good mom, I did, and uh, discovered how, um, how powerful it was in helping me feel more present in my body um, and, and just to learn how to move my body in a different way. So I started training in the martial arts. Um, long after they quit, I kept going, earned the rank of first degree black belt. And when I did, uh, I was asked to teach some empowerment self-defense classes and women's empowerment self-defense classes. So I taught one or two a year. And then along with another woman who was training in the martial arts, we started to teach more of those. And then we invited other women who were training in the martial arts to teach these classes um, more often. And I remember distinctly there was a workshop that we were doing at one of the local universities. And as each instructor went around introducing themselves, we realized what in, an incredible team that we had. So in addition to myself as a psychologist, we had someone in law enforcement, we have an educator, we had a forensic toxicologist, uh, we had a physical therapist, uh, a guardian ad litem, someone in business, and now we we have Jenny, who's in women's health. And so it was a team that we couldn't have put together had we tried. Uh, it was just incredible. So that's how it kind of started. Mm -hmm. and, and when we realized that this was a pretty incredible team and that what we were offering was much needed, we became a nonprofit. That was about 20 years ago. And since that time, we have really grown exponentially uh, because the need has remained mm -hmm. strong uh, for these services. Yeah, so, so just uh, really quickly, 20 years ago, when yeah. you started, congratulations. Um, how, did, how, did, how did you start the organization? Well, we started just teaching these classes, and then we learned about, and then invited these women, and then we learned about how do you start a nonprofit. And so we did some education on that, and just started offering the trainings uh, where they were needed. So we were offering them in colleges, we were offering them in community centers, uh, in schools, um, any place that it was needed, we started offering those classes. And over time, you know, one of the things that I really think is um, notable about the safety team is we like to make sure that what we're doing really works and that it's trauma-informed mm -hmm. and that we're using best practices. So over that time, we have continued to evolve the program mm -hmm. based on all of that as well as based on the input from the people that we're serving. Yeah. So we like to know, how does this feel for you? Is this working for you? In in addition to, is it best practices in the field? And I'm proud to say that we do both. So it's people enjoy it, they learn, they give us positive feedback, and we're continuing to evolve the program to make sure that it serves the people that we're trying to serve. So how has the program evolved over the last 20 years? It sounds like it's a very organic process. Yeah, so it's grown in terms of the number of instructors that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started offering these violence prevention, empowerment, self-defense classes, um, and then it's grown in terms of the number of instructors that we have, we then added our trauma recovery program. And that we did because we realized that while there's research that indicates impairment self-defense can help with healing, um, 
we knew that there were some people who wouldn't feel comfortable in these classes, attending these classes. These are community classes. Yep. Um, and we also knew that a more attuned approach based on um, what I know from the field of yes. psychology, uh, I, we knew that we needed to do it a little bit differently and include some additional information. Mm -hmm. So it started with these violence prevention programs. Mm -hmm. it, we continue to offer that. And now we offer this, this uh, trauma recovery program that's a mind-body approach um, that capitalizes on everything that I know from the field of neuroscience and trauma recovery plus what we know from the empowerment self-defense field. And it's a program that is really unique. And uh, you know, I've been in the field helping survivors for um, longer than I care to admit sometimes. Um, <laughs> And it's been some of the most gratifying work that I have ever done because it's, it, the results are transformational. You know, I work with people and sometimes it takes, it, understandably, it takes a while for healing to occur. Mm -hmm. But when you involve the mind and the body mm -hmm. and you use these powerful techniques to facilitate that, we have seen really rapid and transformational results. It seems very holistic. It is, yeah. it is. The approach seems very comprehensive. And it's almost like this entire rejuvenation, you know, everybody always talks mind, body, spirit, those kinds of things that really rebuild the foundational, um, the foundational capacity of the human being. Absolutely, and I would say that one more thing that we add, mind, body, voice. You know, one of the things that's really important is we help people find, reclaim, uh, their voice, which um, one of the things that happens uh, during an assault mm -hmm. is a part of the brain called Broca's area goes offline. That's the speech area of the brain. And so you're often rendered speechless when there's a high level of threat. Oh. And so that is something that people carry with them. I didn't say anything. And well, of course you didn't because your brain was just do op operating in the service of your survival and you weren't able to. And so one of the things we do both in the community classes and in this uh, tr um, uh, tra trauma recovery program is we help people find their voice and amplify that voice. And that is powerful to see. And pairing that with the body yeah. and the psychoeducation that we offer uh, it's really a, it really is a comprehensive program. So you come out stronger and yeah. more resilient and, and are able to heal. Exactly. Through the process. Exactly. That's amazing. It's, it it's very gratifying to watch people walk in and walk out, same people, <laughs> very differently. You know, standing taller, feeling powerful, using their voice, and um, really discovering that they have far more power and presence than they realized they had. And it was there all along, but, but they, now they have found it. That's, it's also reclaiming identity, yeah. which is so vital after something of trauma. Yeah, um, absolutely. At least from what I've been told, I, mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor like you are. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that, that's really wonderful. So I wanted to, um, so I, I just need to know, safety team, it sounds like you've kind of explained it. How did you come up with the name? You know, that's kind of a funny story because it's, it's another one of these happy accidents. We didn't plan it. It was, it was actually, it occurred in one of our classes um, before we were actually a nonprofit. It was just something that came out, oh, the safety team. And we've thought about changing it over the years and then we realized it's actually a perfect name because if I take the two words, safety is essential to everything that we do. If you don't feel safe, you can't learn. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel safe, you can't connect with others. And if you don't feel safe, you can't heal. Safety, it's fundamental. Wow. Team is really important too. You know, we're all better together. You know, we, <laughs> we're such a diverse team and we really, um, uh, value the expertise that each and every person brings to that organization. In addition, we support one another. I wouldn't want to do this work alone. You know, we're t this, is not a, this is not a light topic. This no. is a very serious topic. And so having the support of others, having the perspective of others, um, and having the expertise of others, and we all have different styles, different teaching approaches, and that offers a, a really um, a, a way for each participant to find some instructor that they can connect with. So safety, team, And, and also perfect. feeling like you have a team too, you know, like when you're dealing with trauma, feeling like a lot of people, people have your back. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? There's the presence of, of, of a community that's there caring and supporting for you, I would assume is also very valuable. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Such a great name. Yeah, it's turned out to be okay. Yeah. Yeah, we and you guys got great branding. I like the t-shirts, you're all uniform. <laughs> So um, 
Um, Jenny, I wanted to ask you, um, as the executive director, mm -hmm. what makes your program so special and unique? I would say that um, everything we do in our community program, and especially, is that everything we do or say is intentional. Because of the high statistics of sexual assault, um, you know, we have one out of five women in the United States get raped over the course of their life. 50% uh, of women experience some form of, of assault uh, other than rape. So because of that, uh, we know that it can be very intimidating for someone to come into our class and also very cour courageous. Mm -hmm. uh, so our first step is to make sure everybody feels safe. So we really want to create an environment where people feel safe. And for, for that reason, we have many instructors. Um, we have a ratio of uh, one instructor to four participants. So when you walk in, you have a lot of people warmly welcoming you, learning your name, connecting so that you can feel safe. And then later when you practice the um, physical skills, it's done in small groups. So everything can be adapted if you have a bad shoulder or for any reason. Uh, and that's good for people to know. Yeah, yeah. You All know. level of fitness can attend the class. You yes. don't have to be an athlete or a martial artist. Uh, you're, you're welcome to come. And also, I think what I want people to know about our classes is that we focus on empowerment and prevention. Uh, we do teach really easy and effective uh, physical skills, mm -hmm. but the focus is really on the mental strategies and the prevention tips so that your, ri your risk is reduced mm -hmm. uh, and with the hope that you don't need the physical skills. So later. it's almost like risk reduction. Yeah. Yeah. You know, techniques and risk reduction, being aware more of your surroundings. Absolutely. How you, you know, how, how you exist in our world, um, things that are flags, maybe uh, letting people know, you know, I, I assume like visual cues, things that they should yeah. be aware of yeah, yeah, and yeah. be wary of. So it's All almost the, like, like an intelligence man component. Manipulative, the manipulative strategies that predators take. And so you, wow. we learn a lot. Yeah, we cover really a lot of material. So I just have to say two things. Yeah. One is uh, something we often quote is the best way to win a fight is to not get in one. So there's that. And the second is we shouldn't have to know all this. Mm -hmm. You know, that we are educating people about all this risk reduction when, you know, in, in, the, in the ideal world, these are things that we wouldn't have to know. Mm -hmm. You know, you know we, we have a right to be safe. Yeah. It's just that in the world that we currently are in, mm -hmm. that's not the case. So I just always like which, to point which that out. Which is interesting because the safety team exists because we live in a society that requires it. As a, exactly. A, a, as, a, which is unfortunate. Exactly. Um, because, you know, we always like to think, oh, we live in America, you know, mm -hmm. things are safe. And, and the reality is very different than that. And we take every opportunity in the workshop to redirect the blame mm -hmm. on the attacker. You know, you there's see nothing. That a lot? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people blame themselves for mm -hmm. what happened to them. Uh, they think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have wore that. I shouldn't have drank that. There's nothing that you do that causes an attack. 100% of the blame for an attack falls on the attacker 100% of the time. Yes. What causes an attacker? An attack? Yeah, an attacker. And in some ways, it's almost like, you know, it's like the alcohol admitting that they're an alcoholic. It's like the victim admitting that and accepting the fact that they were the victim. Um, it sounds like it's a real, it's, it's like that first step towards yeah. recovery. I don't know, I'm not the doctor, but that's Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking about this whole yeah. concept mm -hmm. and, you know, that, that the, um, we're doing things to reduce risk, mm -hmm. but it isn't our fault that it happens in the first place. And I think that's really important for people to know, that there's right. nothing that they're actually doing that causes the assault, that mm -hmm. it's something beyond them, yeah. um, that predates them, pre-exists before they walked wherever they walked, um, that, it's, it, that it's, the, it's the attacker that needs to change. And that's yeah. part of, mm -hmm. we, we're in a culture, you know, yeah. when you talk about changing that sense of it's my fault to it's not my fault, 
Um, that takes a cultural shift yep. because there's so much in our society that has misplaced the blame where it doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're part of trying to change that culture so the blame gets placed where it does mm -hmm. belong, which also allows us to readdress or actually address the causes, the root causes yep. of violence. And that's what we want to do. So it's about people, you know, most people know it's, well, you know, I, I know it's not my fault. But what we're trying to do is get them to actually believe that it's not their fault. And that's a big shift because yeah. most people walk in, you know, they, they would tell you that, well, I know it's not my fault. But actually sort of sitting with it and yeah. saying, yes, I believe that it's not my fault. That is huge. And that's a big component of healing is when you recognize that I didn't cause this. Someone else did. It's and almost like reaching out this horrible root of like, of, you know, and, and then that's stuck in your heart. It's really terrible. That can be very detrimental, yeah. especially over the years. Yeah, exactly. Time, it just gets worse, right? Mm -hmm. So that's remarkable. Um, so another thing too, you know, like uh, I, I wanted to ask uh, Jesse, you're uh, currently enrolled in ESD uh, tr instructor training. Yes. Uh, can you tell me what instructor training is like? Um, it's actually a lot of fun. So our current class has a really great group of people. I walk in knowing I'm gonna have a great time, but I always leave like super energized, excited for the next class. Um, but what actually inspired me to get into the program was we took a level one and level two that we had offered to our employees at the city of Burlington actually, and I was like, oh sure, I've always wanted to do something like this. I'll take the class and see. Um, I feel like as a person with a small build, I've typically moved through the world with like a level of fear of like what would happen if somebody were to attack me if I'm walking on the street. Um, I definitely know I wouldn't be able to def like defeat the person, but I didn't necessarily know how to defend them mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, so I always had that initial like I want to learn more and like getting the opportunity to take the class was awesome. Um, after taking the two classes, I was like, I'm totally signing up to be an instructor. <laughs> um, I had such a great time, but I think the biggest takeaway was that empowerment of myself and fe feeling like I have my voice felt powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of what we learn in the training is, yes, we learn the physical parts of it, but also there's a lot of emphasis on using our voice in the process of defending ourselves. Um, I can be a little bit timid sometimes and like you feel more powerful even when you like do a strike and you're saying stop, get away, like you're calling attention to yourself. People know you're not safe mm -hmm. um, and that's something people might easily forget in a situation. Like you feel like you have to be timid or like try not to call too much attention mm -hmm. to yourself but that's what you would actually want to do. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna become an instructor, bring this to the city and kind of like bridge any gaps or barrier that probably exists to getting people there. Because mm -hmm. if we can't like get people to come off the clock and go to a training, we can bring it there and like offer it during work hours so it's more accessible. Um, so, so that's yeah. interesting. So you guys also will come on site um, and work with companies? Uh, we go to schools, we go to colleges, we go to corporations. So for instance, uh, Gordon Windows uh -huh. hired us to come and do a workshop with their employees because they go out by themselves into people's house to measure windows mm -hmm. things. So they wanted to uh, make sure that they felt safe. So yeah, we can go anywhere. In, you well, know, that's cities. interesting. So if you have a company or a store or a restaurant or anything where you would like to empower your employees or make them feel safer in the work mm -hmm. that they do, um, they can talk to the safety team and have them, you can have them come in and do a workshop, um, which is an incredibly valuable service. Um, and you're right, it's like Windows, Gordon's window decor, classic example, like mm -hmm. when you're going into houses, you know, you're invited, but there is a certain element there. Mm -hmm. That's a great partnership. Yeah, home nurses, real estate agents. Yep. Uh, it's, it's really relevant for a lot of people. So if somebody wanted to talk to you, they'd, they'd go to the safety team website yep. and uh, reach out about yep. that. Now, how does one become an instructor? Like, I assume you do the classes. Do you have to be invited? Do you want to choose? H how do you become an instructor, Jesse? It's actually pretty easy. <laughs> I mean, right after the class, you can speak to one of the instructors and say, I want to do this. I want to be a part of the program. Um, there wasn't any necessarily big things I had to do. There's like a manual we read, so we have access to like what to do in different scenarios, and also learning how to teach people the skills, because when you learn the skill first, it's like, okay, 
I'm learning how to defend myself, you're in a different mindset, and now it's like, okay, how do you teach this to people who may have had exposure to unsafe situations and being mindful about that in the class yeah. and like more awareness of what's going on. It's like a different layer of like stuff happening. Um, so you're a professional empiopath now? <laughs> <laughs> in a sense, yes, for sure. And I, I studied psychology actually oh. in my undergrad. Um, so I've always been, I guess, interested in learning about people, how they think, how they function, and not necessarily thinking about that safety opponent as much mm -hmm. in my education. So now this has been a really interesting way to kind of like combine what I know about people and how they operate, and also how do we get people to become their best selves, like their most aware self, right? Because we're so on autopilot. We take the same routes, we do the same thing. Um, and how do we build our confidence as women in the world, mm -hmm. right? Like, I feel like there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of things constantly happening around. Um, and now I like walk around thinking, okay, what's going on around <laughs> me? Like, how would I react if something happened? But not from a place of fear, yeah. more from a place of if something did happen, I do know I can defend myself, right? I'm yeah. not trying to defeat anyone. Um, and as a woman of color of two, I like wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily notice sometimes when you move in spaces and you're like crouched and like trying to not get people to notice you. Yeah. Um, and I think a big part of this training has also be, been personally for me like feeling comfortable taking up space. That's a huge female thing. Yeah, you're you know there's a sort of dim dismissive kind of um, uh, you know submissive way that women are taught to carry their bodies and their voices mm -hmm. in society um, and instead of like throwing your shoulders back and having confidence and you know propelling yourself forward with confidence is, is, is a major thing. Yeah. Have you found it transformative? <laughs> I have for sure. Um, I think I have more trust in myself and my physical abilities. I mean, I thought you had to be like a martial artist or somebody with like super special skills um, <laughs> to be able to defend yourself. But I, I think it's just having the education and having a supportive environment to even learn that, right? In a space where you feel like, okay, I'm supported. No one's judging me because we're all starting from this place where we're all trying to learn and like be more aware people. Yeah. Um, and I'm super excited definitely to like bring this to our employees and see how it impacts people because I feel like everybody takes away something different. But I definitely feel a lot more powerful um, in my tiny mm -hmm. body. Um, she is powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I've held the pad for her. <laughs> um, for sure. So it's a lot of discovery in that sense of like things you didn't know you were even capable of. Um, and becoming aware of that and owning it and being proud of it. Like, don't mess with me because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's and that's a wonderful journey, though. It is. I think it that's is. great. So, how long? You know, you started doing the programs. I'm wondering how long it's taken. So um, we typically do one class a month, kind of okay. like a couple of hours, like maybe like five hours, six okay. hours, once a month, um, where we go over like knowledge-based stuff. Then we practice teaching each other the skill, mm -hmm. um, and then we work on teaching it to the group. So you kind of get a feel for that. And as Jenny mentioned, there's a lot of instructors in the real world classes. <laughs> um, so we're constantly given the opportunity to show up in, with different groups, different age groups, different places um, to practice what we're learning um, and kind of just be exposed to what different types of people need. Because yeah. you can learn something one way um, and then go to a different group and have to adapt to meet people where they're at. Um, so that in itself has, I think, been a really great learning. And not, it's not overwhelming. Like, it's just one day a month. You but there's something through. wonderful about the fact that it's, it's ever-changing, right? Yes. That it's an organic process. And, and you're learning, too, because you're learning through the process of how to engage with the people you're working with. Yeah. So everybody's learning. Which yes. is better. Yeah. <laughs> and also women do that really well. Um, <laughs> anywho, <laughs> it's worth noting. Um, so really quickly, I'm, to get on with it, I want to, um, I want to talk. We're going to do a demo. So um, the amazing women at the safety team are now going to show you a demo of all the wonderful work that they do. And we're going to do that uh, right now. Hi everybody, we are now going to do our demo with the safety team and uh, they're going to show myself and you some of their techniques. 
So one of the things that we teach is a defense against what we call an unwanted hug. And one of the things that's important about this, it can be a low level threat or we can ratchet it up if there's a higher level threat. So if we're in a social situation and, and Jesse is the unwanted hugger, not a hugger. So simply what we're doing is she's coming to hug. I don't want this hug. I'm just grabbing her hands, crossing them, pushing them back and using my voice, not a hugger. Um, and so it's not complicated. So that's yeah. in a low level situation and a higher level threat. We, we would accompany that with a different, uh, we might say something different other than not a hugger because we want to call attention to people around us. Uh, and we might accompany, we want to, might want to also include a strike, which we'll show you later. Okay. So did you want to try that? Am I going to hug you? No, you're not going to be able to. Okay, well, let me, <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try. You ready? So we're, we're okay. at some sort of social gathering, and you're one of those. I am a total hugger, so like, and watch I out. I want it. Okay, and here I, we go. I'm I coming a, for it. And I have a right to not well, of course. have a hug if I don't want it. Okay, here we go. Not a hug. Wow, that was really effective. <laughs> so it's, it's really simple. Yeah, just grabbing the arms, putting them together. It, it's not calling a, a whole uh -huh. lot of attention. It displaced the energy and pushed right. it back. Exactly. That was great. So that definitely worked. All right. You're not getting a hug. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So the next yep. thing we wanted to talk about. Um, so in our workshop, we talk about how you want to be aware in certain situations so that you can spot the danger. Uh, and try to avoid it. And avoid it might just be leaving the room or crossing the street. But when the danger remains, we encourage you to use a defensive stance. And that's how it goes. So you just take your leading foot and you put it at a 45 degree angle. And notice when I do that, I'm blading my body so that my vital targets are not right in front. So I'm protecting myself just by moving like this. And then I keep my knees soft. Uh, so that I'm more grounded, mm -hmm. more solid. And then I put my hands up. And just doing that can deter 60% of attacks. Just doing that because it telegraphs to everybody that I'm not on board with what's happening. Okay? Uh -huh. And then if you add your voice, it yeah. goes up to 80% of attacks can be deterred. So Mariah, wow. what could That's we say? Incredible. What could we say? What word could you use Stop. in this situation? Stop. Okay, so we're gonna get in our neutral stance. Okay. Okay. On the count of three, we're gonna all say stop. Okay. One, two, three. Stop. stop. So just doing that deters okay. eighty percent of attacks. That felt really good. And if that doesn't work, then yeah. we move to striking. So we'll show you a couple of things that we do in class. All right. So the first one is the edge fist. Okay, the edge fist. So we take our hand to make a fist, we curl our fingers, we tuck our thumb here so we don't hurt it, but we're actually not going to use it like a punch. We're going to actually use the side of our the side of our hand, which is actually pretty strong. If you try this yourself, you'll see that, that that's a pretty strong part of your, of your hand. Um, and so we use that to hit targets that will be effective in helping us successfully escape with minimal er, uh, injury to ourselves. Because remember, we're trying to defend ourselves. We're not, we're not out to try to defeat this person. That's not our goal. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to get away with as little injury as we can. So on a person, I might strike the temple or the ribs. Um, those are two good places. I can come down on the collarbone. Um, and if, if, if I turn around, I can get the groin. Mm -hmm. um, but on a pad, it looks like this. And what am I forgetting? The voice. The voice. Really. So what, what would you like me to say? Stop. Stop. No. You like stop. Stop is good because it's one word and it's very clear. Yeah. Uh, and remember, under adrenaline stress, it's hard to think. Yeah. So you want a word that's easy to remember that you've practiced and you've paired with the strike. So stop's a good one. Stop. 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 And it feels very therapeutic, I must say. And it was stronger. It's kind of a power word. Yeah. It is. When you use your voice, you breathe, and you're more powerful. It's so true, because you're, you're, you're punching through with the power of the yeah. breath. Yeah. Right. That was impressive. We have one last one. So, and that's really interesting. So the side of the hand. Yeah. Yes, because people punching, if you if you punch incorrectly, you're likely to break the bones. I was wondering yeah, about it. And so, and it, and it requires yeah, it some, like it awesome. requires some yeah. training. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. this, it's, okay. it's yeah. pretty yeah. easy to it's use. It's like a that. hammer. It is like a hammer. It's very, it's very strong. It's not going to hurt you, That's but really it is going to do what it needs to do to help you escape successfully. 
All right, you want to do the knee? All right, so All right. the knee is another one that uh, is very powerful. So our lower bodies have a lot of power. Um, this one maximizes or amplifies the power of the lower body by including the upper body as well. So when I do a knee strike, I'm, I'm using my knee, but I'm also pulling the pad down, kind of like a two-way um, accident or whatever you might call it, where you've got the force of two forces hitting together. So, you know, this is what it looks like very, very slowly. And stop, 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 stop. It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For you too? Just I was scared. <laughs> and the great thing about the knee is it, it, it doesn't powerful. always look powerful, yeah. but, but it is. If you're on that end of it, you can feel it. And the other thing about it is you don't have to be super accurate. Yep. You know, one of the things we say, what's the target for the knee? Everything. So, you know, on a person I might, may I touch you? Yes. So on a person, I might grab the shoulder and it, I don't have to be super accurate where I am. There's so many places that it, and it's still gonna be very powerful because this is a very strong part of your body. And you're using your arms, your upper body, and your lower body. And it's cumulative force. Exactly. Too. So you exactly. get more out of your body because you're using them falling towards gravity right. with your own movement. Right. Which, and, and for women, having those kinds of strategies is really important because probably whoever you're talking about is probably bigger than you are. In I'm all sure. likelihood. Yeah, in all likelihood. And uh, it doesn't require a whole lot of training to be able to do that. It's just, it's just pulling and, you know, and if she'd done any kind of a, Cardio class, you've probably done something similar. Uh, it's a jazz exercise. Yeah, exactly. It's a little yeah. bit different, but, but yeah. it's the same movement. And we also say you don't have to execute it perfectly. The idea is to deter an attack or to do what you need to, to escape. You're not getting rated on how, how efficient it was, how perfect it yeah. was. You just need to do something that lets that person know that this is good. This is not going to be something that you're going to walk away from without injury, or, yeah. or you might get hurt and you might get caught. And um, I'm assuming that the other person doesn't want either of those things. Yeah, it becomes so, a risk assessment. You got it. Yep, you got it. And that's that's really interesting. That, that was wild. <laughs> <laughs> so those are our three things. Did you want to try any of those? Yeah, I'll try them. All right, I'll try. I'll I'll try. So first thing I want you yep. to try is I is I had yep. you do the hug yep. on me. I'm going to try to hug you. And I so I, I get gonna, them in twist, right? Yes, yeah, so you're just going to grab them. I, I haven't seen you in so long. Uh, not a hugger. Perfect. That was perfect. Okay. Wow. All right. Cool. I know that now. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try okay. the edge fist? Yeah. Sure. All right. All right. So, so, so what is the reminder? You yep. put the like this. Yes. And you start the strike here, and you're going to engage your whole body. Okay. So it's a so pivot. It's, yeah. Exactly. Is, is it have more force if I step into it, or is that? No. Well, you good? just stay here, grounded. Okay. So this okay. way you'll keep your balance. Right. So you're just moving. See how okay. my foot is. Yeah, I got it. Everything. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right. You ready? Yeah. Whenever you're ready, you start here and then. Okay. Yeah. Stop! <sighs> stop! Nice! And then put okay. that arm up. And I do it from the side. Yeah, yeah. Just, just to protect oh, your stop. face. Stop! Oh, there you go. All right, we got this. Stop! There you go. Sure. Okay. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Doesn't it feel like rejuvenating? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now I have to use my left. This is really fun. I, I've never really seen this. Yeah. Don't judge me for my knee thing, okay? And I will hit the back. All right, so what do I? Do we want to? So what you're going to do is uh, this This is sort of simulates the body. Yep. You know, so you're just going to grab up on top, and mm -hmm. you're just going to do one at instructional speed, nice and slow. You're just going to bring it down so that you get a feel for it, and then when you're ready, you can go okay. harder. All right, cool. Uh, you probably don't have to be that low with me. Yeah, you're tall. It's, yeah, it's real. All right, you ready? One, two, three. Stop. Oh, you got Second. it. Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Good. All right. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Right. What? So you know, what, are you okay? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this pad yeah. is really. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I know. I, I just feel like I would be on the ground if I could feel your knee hitting me. I don't want any trauma. Okay. All right. Yeah. So um. Yeah. Do you want to try one more time? Yeah. Do another one. Okay. 
What's up? I, yeah. You've got it. Okay, yeah. cool. You know, one yeah. thing I would just want to comment on, you said, don't yeah. judge me. We do not judge people. Okay. We look at this as incremental growth. We know okay. people start and end at different places, mm -hmm. and we welcome any part along that journey that works for you. That's what we want. So we're not there to judge. We know that people can do different things. Everybody's body is different, yeah. but that everybody um, can try to do something, and that's what we really applaud. And, and can empower themselves right. through these kinds of movements where they feel like they have these, they have these resources in themselves that they can yeah. tap into. I mean, did you see how powerful you were? And that was yeah. the first time you've done it. That was, that was kind of awesome. It was. <laughs> I love hear that. I like that. You need that too, everyone. Do you hear me? Uh, that was awesome, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all so much for all that you do. Uh, let's get right back at it. We have to uh, do some more talking. Thank you so much. Guys, that was amazing. Thank you so much for doing that. I really loved watching that. That was awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, so we're back here. We want to uh, discuss um, all the work that you guys do. Uh, Christine, I just uh, I understand they use the same technique in trauma recovery in the trauma rep recovery program. Um, can you tell me about the trauma recovery program? And sure. What that means? Sure. As I mentioned earlier, it started because we realized there was a need. So we took some of the techniques from our community violence prevention classes uh, and we attuned them to survivors. So it starts with, so that's the group sessions, but it starts with individual sessions with a mental health provider. And in those sessions, we really go over a lot of psychoeducation, the neurobiology of trauma. We explain what, um, how, why and how uh, trauma activation or triggering occurs. We help people better understand that. And we get them ready for those group sessions. Um, there's a lot of information that we present, but one of the things that's really important is they develop a trusting relationship with that therapist so that when they go into that group sessions, they already have an ally. They wow. already know someone in that class that can help them when or if they get activated and then move through that in a way that promotes healing. So we take these same techniques that we use in our community classes, mm -hmm. but we approach offering them in a very different way. So it's more gradual, it gives the um, participant total control over how we progress. We can work through that trauma. They'll often tell us about experiences or situations that they want to learn a technique for so we can help them with that. But it takes them from what that freeze response that is very common when someone is assaulted or there's any kind of threat, our bodies naturally, our brain actually causes us to freeze. It's called tonic immobility. And we, we can move people from that. And that's what mm -hmm. contributes to um, ending up with uh, PTSD or, or other such um, symptoms. Huh. But we help them move through that mm -hmm. so that they actually have a response to it. It's moving the body in a way that heals them. And it's, uh, it, it can be very uh, it, it just can be very incredible to watch them address a situation that before would make them shut down or freeze, and now they have some sense of mastery and control, um, and it's amazing to watch. And we do it in a very, very gradual fashion that's attuned to each person, and then we have a very high instructor. Um, it's, we have a lot of instructors in that class, and they're specially trained to respond to people if they uh, have that trauma activation, which again is very common, and we expect that. So it's individual sessions with a mental health provider, moves into three small group sessions. We usually have no more than six participants and two to three instructors. Wow. Um, and it's quite the ratio. It's, it is, and it's a, really it's a short treatment. If you look at the scheme of, yeah. of treatments, you yeah. know we're talking about at most at six sessions and sometimes only four, depending on how many individual sessions they, they feel like they need wow. uh, or seem appropriate. And the results have been just um, really heartwarming and transformational. So, um, Well, it sounds like it's so comprehensive because there's a lot of components to trauma. I mean, this is obviously not my field, but it's, it, it's like you're really digging into everything for that human being and lifting them out of a state, letting them be aware when they're feeling those feelings, so then there's self-awareness, right. so that they can also learn to help themselves, Yeah. right? Which is like the biggest way to move forward. Yeah, um, and, and on top of it, as we talked earlier, it's reclaiming your voice. And for many people, I just talked about that freeze response, so your body might shut down. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so sometimes as a way to cope, people sort of 
distance themselves from their body mm -hmm. and we bring them back into the body and not only that, now they're experiencing their body as powerful. So before it kind of shut down and they, and they may even feel like, gee, I don't know, my body didn't help me in that situation, which is a natural response to threat. I just want to point that out. Yeah. But here's a way that you now can be present in your body and experience it as powerful, which is sort of the antithesis of feeling like it's shut down. Yeah. And just imagine that. So all of a sudden now you claim your voice and now you've got this powerful body and you have the information to help you better understand what happened mm -hmm. and why it all happened in terms of what your body did. It's, it's, a, it's a winning combination for and people. And you have control of your life again. Exactly. Which is a huge problem you know, when people are dealing with trauma as they feel like they've lost control of their life and there's that sense of, you know, you're never gonna get it back feeling. The other thing that I think is really notable <laughs> about these groups is that people come from all walks of life, all ages, all body sizes. So if you're a survivor and you walk into a group and there's people who look all different, all of a sudden you realize it wasn't about me. It wasn't something about me that made that, because it could be anyone, um, which I mean that in a good way. Yeah, no. You know, that it's, it's this, that's freeing when you realize it wasn't something about me that caused this. It's something about the predator. It's something about the assailant. It's not about me. You know? And that's been very powerful for women um, yeah, and who I, participate and in I'm it. I'm sure some people might actually become very emotional mm -hmm. with that realization. Mm -hmm. That's got to be quite the release. Mm -hmm. And they support one another. Well, which, is, which is part of the loving, wonderful yeah. thing about that, right? When people are feeling those feelings and then they feel them together. Yeah, exactly. Right. They feel them together, but they don't have to share their stories too. So I feel like some participant, for some of them, mm -hmm. it's really it's important that mm -hmm. they don't have to tell what happened to them, mm -hmm. but they can be here in the moment and uh, move their body and and, and, and still embrace like and, and 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 embrace the culture and embrace the learning and the experience and the other people with them. Mm -hmm. But maybe you're right. Sometimes being very public about personal pain can be tough. They, they're welcome to share it in the yep. individual sessions, mm -hmm. um, but we find that in the group sessions, it's very freeing to know that you don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to share it. We, they all know that something yeah. happened to every person. Yeah. They know that's why yeah. they're there, but they don't need to know the details. And in fact, I think it's therapeutic not to sit and listen to a bunch of other. Yeah, exactly. That's tough stuff. Yeah, right? and I mean, it just kind of probably stuff. makes you relieve the trauma. I would assume exactly. on some level as well, which could also be very traumatic. Right. Instead right. of growing out of the experience and moving beyond the experience, you're dwelling in it and it's becoming a focal point, right? Um, or, or sharing it can be also like reliving the trauma. Right. And to hear everyone's trauma can be really hard to hear. And I say that as a therapist who's heard a lot of trauma. <laughs> it's, and, 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 and it's true. Um, so that's interesting. Do you guys have any, I mean, we don't need to use names, but do you have any uh, great stories of, um, of how people have come into the sessions and, and had growth or um, any, any personal experiences? Uh, I think we can say that just generally, yeah. we can see a big difference from the first session to the next. Yep. Uh, you know, they have first individual session, then the first group session, then a week passes, they come to the second session and people just say, I, I can walk uh, straighter, I, I can breathe better, I've been able to establish boundaries. And so they come with stories where, um, yeah, like just, just one affirmation. session. Stories of affirmation is, helpful. is yeah. great. And then you can also talk to the others in your group mm -hmm. about how you're all growing. Yeah. And then you see those groups, the, the growth with everyone. Mm -hmm which is, is, is wonderful. It's like yeah. a And effect. even with the community workshop, we have a level one that is you know, <clears throat> focused on prevention and we do, we practice mm -hmm. five strikes and then we have a, the level two, which is mostly um, defense against different attacks. So okay. wrist grabs, um, chokes, bear hugs, groundwork. Okay. And at the beginning of the level two, we ask, so has anything changed for you since you've taken the level one? in the way that you, you walk into the world. And, and peop there's always someone saying, oh yes, let me tell you how I establish <laughs> my boundaries. And how I'm, you know, and we practice a form of breathing, box breathing. And, uh, Sorry, so what is box breathing? 
It's it's a it's it's a technique that the Navy SEALs use to help them, you know, stay focused in yes, periods of stress. Yes, you too can stress. be a Navy SEAL if you use box breathing. <laughs> it's very simple. You just you know inhale for four seconds, hold for four seconds, exhale for four seconds, hold, and you do that a, a, a few times. So it's times. a four seconds loop. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. very easy. You can try that at it time. calms your nervous system. Yeah. Really? What it does. It's been shown to actually calm mm -hmm. the central nervous system. Mm -hmm. so if you it's do, like counting to 10. But. but, well, counting to 10, but with deep breathing and holding it and making sure it's diaphragmic breathing. Yep. Because And counting to 10, it's so funny because I have many clients who say, well, I counted to 10, but while I was counting, I was thinking about whatever how mad I was, and it didn't work. I'm like, well, no, that probably isn't going to work. <laughs> so it's, it's calming yourself, breathing in, really allowing yourself to relax and doing that diaphragm diaphragmic breathing and the hold is important mm -hmm. and, and that is shown to help calm our nervous system. Yeah, because a lot of people breathe with their chest. Right. Pa otherwise known as panic breathing mm -hmm. where you just have these shallow breaths. Which can lead to hyperventilating. Which is <laughs> right. And, and really and don't feel better. Right. <laughs> you're not doing yourself any favors. Right, right. Right. And you're not getting as much oxygen to your muscles either. Right. That's really interesting. So box breathing. Yeah. I'm so glad I have somebody I learned today. <laughs> Besides all the wonderful stuff from you, that's very cool. So um, so there's two different courses that are the workshops that you actually um, have for people. How, how would somebody sign up for a, a, either the session one or session two? You just go on the website. Okay. You can sign up there. We have uh, actually a couple of workshops that are free that they uh, are sponsored by the Vermont Community Foundation. And we have one that's coming up very soon at Main Street Landing. Uh, in the great room on September uh, 25th. Um, so that will be a level one and it will be super fun. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> now, now is that a one or two? That's a level one. Okay, yeah. great. Um, so, and that's on the 25th? 25th of September All at right. six o'clock. You that's can wonderful. sign up on the website. Yeah. And that's exciting. So if, if anybody's out there, please go to the website um, and find, if, if this is something you're interested in, find the workshop that works for you. Um, and uh, and get out there and, and, and start uh, growing and um, you know healing yourself. So uh, Christine and uh, Jenny, um, I understand that you have uh, that you have been volunteers for ten, even twenty years now. Twenty years. Mm -hmm. um, what has kept it going all these years? Well, I I mean it's 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 just a it's a it's a mission of the heart, mm -hmm. you know, it, going going to these workshops and watching this kind of change in people, seeing how they come into their bodies, how they come into their resilient spirit, the courage that they show just showing up for a workshop. I mean, and as we talked earlier, watching people walk out differently than they walked in, it's just so gratifying. I mean, there are a few things that can make you feel like, I'm making a difference. We're making a difference. Um, and so that really feeds me to see that, especially since, you know, by day I'm, I'm working with, I mean, I'm hearing a lot of trauma, but we have been offering these workshops at night. By night, we're working on the prevention end. So and it's so, almost like therapy for you. I mean, I, it's, I, I, in mean, a way I have it to is. say for you, it's therapeutic it because is. you feel like you're actually making a difference on a crisis you're seeing on a daily basis. Yes. Like you're actually transforming and changing how this is framed in the world. I, I like to think that I'm creating less work for myself in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Which kidding. most people don't try to reduce their, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, that's got to feel good, like you're being proactive. Yes, and it's and it, and it is it is doing these workshops that's led to developing that trauma recovery program. You know, it's just, it, and, and all of it has just, I, I just find it so, uh, it just feeds my soul. Yep. You know. And it is a crisis. Rewarding. I there mean, we are in a crisis right now in this country. Um, and it, this is such an interesting um, program for something that is so needed. Uh, I mean, if, 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 in, in this country right now. Um, now, have you, uh, no, I mean, this is, this is going off script, watch out. Um, no, but I'm just wondering, you know, if, ha, have you guys talked to other groups and other places about your program? Because it seems like something that would translate really well to other markets. 
We have. Uh, we have talked with people. Um, we're scheduled to do a training or train some mental health providers in New Hampshire. Um, we've got people in Missouri who are interested. We are connected globally with other practitioners in this field. Um, you know, our hope is that we will expand this program, all of our programs, the Violence Prevention Empowerment Self-Defense mm -hmm. Program, the Trauma Recovery Program, and both of our professional training and certification. So instructor trainings in the ESD and instructor training in the trauma recovery program. We want to expand all of that. We want to get it established here and then we want to sort of continue to expand those programs. We've done some trainings in the Northeast Kingdom. We've gone all over. Mm -hmm. But it uh, seems like such a thing that would translate really well to colleges. Yes. Specifically. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's the that University that. of New Hampshire where we're probably going to do that program okay, next year great. to train uh, train the staff there, and just in our uh, current cohort in the Empowerment Self-Defense Instructor, we have, you know, Jesse from the City of Burlington, we have someone from the National Air Guard, we have two teachers from U32, uh, the high school, that they'll be teaching Empowerment Self-Defense to the students next year, so we want to have our instructor embedded yeah. in all the places that, that needs it, and the places that needs it is high schools. Yep. In colleges, yep. I'm, I'm just going to go. No, and let's be honest. I mean, that's a valid point. The statistics bear that out. Yeah, one sure. out of four college students get assaulted in during the and first that's year. Re what's reported? And it's that's also scary. the least reported crime that there is for very understandable reasons. Mm -hmm. So we know that that we know that the numbers are higher, mm -hmm. and we also know that these numbers are not new. That this is for as long as we've been tracking data, we know that this has been happening. It's been yeah. consistent, which is the scariest part. Yeah. 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 So we need to train more instructors and I more love mental that. health providers. I love how it's also organic. It's you know this is an overused metaphor, but it's like the tree. Like you have the roots, you have the base. And you're creating all these like saplings by training them and allowing to, them to grow out and create their own infrastructure, yeah. um, which which again you know makes it much more um, engaged and, and much more productive. Instead of just being a top down, you have yeah, this yeah, ability yeah. to kind of like bear fruit as far as possible. Helps us extend our reach and support more uh, community members. It also means that in each community, they can tailor the program to what they need. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if there's a community that has a certain need for whatever that is, they can sort of take what we what we have and then they can add, tweak, do what they need to to make sure it meets the needs of the people that they're serving. And we really believe that we need to listen to and value the experience of those with lived experience in these different communities. And so we want to count on that. So we, here's what we know. Let's add what you know yeah. and make it better. And yeah. that, those are the best ideas are the most adaptable. Yeah. Um, they, they tend to have the longest staying power and they tend to do the most good for everyone, which is really remarkable. So that's super exciting. Now I need to ask, I haven't asked about this yet, <clears throat> Jesse, the uh, certification program. So what does certification mean for the uh, safety team? Um, certification means that you are well versed in all parts of the program. <laughs> um, knowing how to teach the five strikes we teach in our level one um, and actually teaching a class is part of the certification program in order to become certified you teach a class so I'm excited to do that a little nervous. <laughs> um, I think certification means not necessarily getting to a point where you arrive as some safety destination, but being able to feel like you can take what you've learned, like they've both shared, and adapt that to the people that you're working with, um, and which is something that draws me more to the program as well, because I'm from, like, I'm a part of the LGBTQ community, I'm a woman mm -hmm. of color, like, I can see ways in which this specific training could impact those communities, um, and how we can work with the safety team and as a group to design training for specific groups of people mm -hmm. um, here in our Vermont community and how that might travel to other people mm -hmm. and keep spreading. Um, yeah, so I would say certification means just being a fully aware, best self person, um, a person that's not necessarily judgmental, a person that's willing to meet people where they're at, a person that can create access and spaces that are safe for people to show up and get what they need to from the classes, yep. um, and being able to acknowledge sometimes that we don't know everything, right? 
Like, we might show up with <laughs> our slides and everything, and there might be a question that you don't know. Um, and that's always a part of most of the sessions, actually. Um, we get questions, people challenge the way we think sometimes, people share their experiences, which inform our classes. Um, we're constantly changing things, um, how we say things, um, to make sure we're very intentional about what we're sharing with people. Yeah, I sure. can imagine there's a lot of emotional charge. There's going to be a lot of emotion charged um, sometimes with people in sessions. So <clears throat> being able to navigate those uh, complexities is probably yeah. really important. For sure. Well, that's very cool. And you found it incredibly rewarding. I do. Um, <laughs> I definitely go home like <laughs> um, to like share what I know with the people around me um, but even like culturally too just seeing reactions to I mean I tell my family oh I'm in self-defense class and my mom laughs like really you're doing self-defense um, so it's really interesting to see like people's assumption of your ability to defend yourself just based on how you look too. Um, yeah. And then when you show up, you're like, actually, you don't want to mess with me? Because <laughs> um, I have That's the awesome. skills I need to defend myself. It's also like shifting the narrative, right? Mm -hmm. That you don't have to look a certain way, be a certain way, have a certain type of skill to be able to defend yourself. Like, I kind of keep sharing that to dismantle mm -hmm. that, like ways of thinking. Because um, we're humans and we make assumptions all the time, yeah, which is fine um, but it's also good to make sure that people are aware like there's other realities out there like there's people showing up to these trainings there's mm -hmm. people finding their voice and using their voice um, and it's not so much about like we're not trying to become like extra martial arts people that can defend anyone mm -hmm. um, we just need people to show up where they're at take what they need and then hopefully that'll support them when they go out in the world and then, and it seems like it really is. It, there's a lot of success stories over the last 20 years, yeah, um, which has been really rewarding. Christine, what are your plans for the future of the organization? Well, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you need to get there? Well, I, I can tell you what we need, <laughs> um, and and where I where I hope that we go is kind of what we talked about earlier. Is I would like <clears throat> to see our reach amplified, yep. and I would like to see it amplified. Um, by training members in different communities to be able to serve their communities. So both our uh, instructor training, like Jesse is doing, as well as our uh, therapeutic program. I, I, would, I, I would love to see us do more of that training so that for, for each training we do, we have then more people who can go out and offer this program, which is how I think we can begin to really make a dent in the statistics that we know are, have not moved a whole lot in our country. Um, so I'd like to see that happen. Um, mm -hmm. And I'd like to see sort of more awareness about what we do and understanding about what we do, mm -hmm. which I think was really important because sometimes people hear self-defense and they get some idea in their head, which is very, very different than what we <laughs> offer. Because yeah. really, it's it, what we offer is really more about uh, self-defense as a vehicle for empowerment mm -hmm. um, and so it's a way to get there and it gives you some practical skills but we're not trying to teach people to go out and, and fight that's not our goal our goal is to reduce your risk so you never need to use the physical skills to feel more present to feel more confident to be able to use your voice in a way that perhaps you couldn't before those are all things that I hope our our culture can better understand what it is that we do mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to see all that happen uh, maybe training too for uh, younger women as they come of age so that that empowerment happens yeah. at a baseline level. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, Jesse, you were talking about how sometimes, you know, like parents and stuff, they're like, oh, you're like, you're our sweet little, you know, child and you've never been all that aggressive right. and, th and those kinds of things that slowly kind of create who we are, who, who we think we are. Mm -hmm. And then empowering people at a young enough age with through education could, you know, be very, could amplify sort of that effect. Um, and maybe protect people before they get into those most compromised uh, time periods in their lives. Well, if we start early, we're also beginning to change the culture earlier. Exactly. And that, I think, is critical, um, is that we really need this cultural shift where there's more respect, where it's okay to set boundaries, where it's expected that you'll set boundaries, where boundaries are respected mm -hmm. by people who, when you set them, all these things that... Yes. that or, or that you even discuss boundaries. Right. Right, that that is even a part of the conversation. Right. Right. These are things and these are huge uh, cultural uh, barriers that we have in our society where like, you know, the flirting, you know, things that are supposed to be untalked about and people play 
you know, stereotypes and, and, you know, a lot of those things can be very detrimental, um, especially to safety and other types of things. And so education really, I think, is key. I'm encouraged that we uh, in Vermont now have a law that requires affirmative consent. That, I don't know when that passed, Jesse. Can you, can you explain that. that to our viewers? So affirmative consent, I mean, the old yeah. adage was only no means no, which meant you had to say no um, in order to, in order for it not to be considered assault. Okay. So what if you passed out? What if you had that freeze response where, or in that, remember we talked about how your voice goes offline, so you couldn't say no. So that was used against people in court when that happened. You had to say no. If you didn't say no, it wasn't considered assault. This flips it on its head. So only yes means yes. Uh -huh. So you actually have to get an affirmative consent. You have to get a yes. Um, and it Which has makes all the sense in the world. Of course, <laughs> you know, because in any, in <laughs> any other crazy. area, you don't have to say no. If you yeah. leave your purse there and you go to the bathroom and I take your wallet, I stole your wallet. But I didn't say no. That's so my from a point. legal standpoint, that's crazy. That's how, it, but yeah. that's, but that wouldn't be the case. Wow. I would be considered theft. Yeah. But with your body, we require to no. Mind boggling, right? Yeah. Mind wow, I had no idea. So, Is that so now it, you, there's got to be a yes. It's got to be enthusiastic. Okay. It's got to be uh, given yep. without coercion, mm -hmm. uh, so freely given. Yep. And it's got to be continuous. So it means that I can change my mind. I might think yep. it's okay. Maybe I wanted to give you two dollars, but I didn't mean to give you my whole wallet. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. I can change. And my I don't mind. want you to have my credit card. Right. <laughs> but you get where, yeah, where yeah, I'm going. Well, that's, so. That's, That's a really significant nuance in yeah. the legal system that I don't know how many viewers are actually aware of. Yeah, it's it's really important. So I would encourage people to to yeah. just Google affirmative consent. Yep. Google uh, the video T T E A uh -huh. and consent. It's what we use to educate people. T and consent. Maybe you can put it in the show notes. Yeah. Um, no, we, uh, so yeah, let's put that in the show notes because I think that's really important for people to take a look at that. But just think about how that's a huge shift. That's a paradigm um, shift. It is. It's important, I think, to mention that when we have uh, high school students in the classroom, um, and to say yes, you can say yes, and you can change your mind too. Yeah. You know, your affirmative consent has to be continuous, and it. Also, it has to be uh, freely given. That means that if there's a power differential, it's not affirmative consent. You know, student a coach, uh -huh. student a teacher, uh, you know, senior even and a, and a younger person, yeah, it, whatever younger. it is. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's real. There's people in positions of power, mm -hmm. and you know, as a younger person, you might not even be aware of those dynamics yeah. and how they're affecting you. Yeah. Right, and until you're older and later and wiser and and in our in our workshops and in the trauma recovery yeah. program, we also have skits where we practice. We show. Those. Oh my gosh, you have skits! Yes, we do. There's some good actors. Yeah, here. Oh, that's I'm awesome. We have some really good predators. That's the worst. So, so wow. So you do, and it includes role playing, which I would yep. think would be very beneficial. Yeah. yeah. We to try hold. to make it fun. It's a very like it's very serious material, but we have fun. Right, yeah. Jesse? Yeah, I agree. Um, and I feel like some of the skits will make your gut turn. Like, you literally feel some of the emotions you would feel if you mm -hmm. were in that situation um, with other people. But we kind of learned to become actors, I guess. <laughs> That's a plug for the training. Um, no, but we have a great time, for sure. It's, a, it's an awesome learning um, environment, for sure. And we feel supported. At least I can speak for myself. I feel supported. Um, I tend to do too many things at once. Um, but I'm able to show up and be present and like always have so much fun. Like I'm always laughing and giggling and it's heavy material, but I think there will also be that part of like, not, we have to take it seriously, of course, but there's also that realness that also has to come with it where we want people to feel like, yes, if I were to not do these things in this situation, it's still okay. Like we are, we're not saying all these things so you can feel like you have to do them in every situation. Yeah. So I think that's what I appreciate about other parts of the, the day as we go through the workshop. It's like, it's okay, it's good to know. Like if you do not do these things, it's still not your fault. Mm -hmm. It's 100% on the attacker yeah. if something happens. It also frees people. 
yeah. too from that inner turmoil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you find what works. Blame. One of the lines I like to use, it's fun with a purpose and cookies. So yeah. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> we have what we call connection cookies and maybe you can show a picture of them. I, I, I think but they, have. <laughs> they are amazing. And it's part of what, it's been our tradition since yeah. the day one to have cookies. I don't know why, I think it's just the moms in us um, yeah. where we always had cookies at the end. And it's amazing what happens when, you know, at that point after people have done all this and then they're connecting with one another and then they're having a cookie and they're chatting more. Food, um, food, food, is, is, food is the universal yeah, yeah icebreaker it is it and really so is. people Eating are people exactly and so we always end our workshops with these connection cookies okay so this leads me to um, I know we talked about the workshops but I want to make sure how pe people need to know how they get free cookies and how they come <laughs> to uh, workshops and how they engage with you um, so there is a level one workshop on the 25th at MSL it will be in the great room um, you also have two more other workshops that are upcoming as oh, we well? We have many more, uh, okay. but we do have a couple in Swanton. We have some in uh, South Burlington. Uh, yeah. We have some at UVM, but there are four students yep. and staff there. So yeah, we usually have two to three workshops a month. Okay, so look online for the workshops. Um, and then I also want to um, talk quickly um, about how our viewers can help. How do they help the safety team? How do they engage with you? Is there a way to donate? How, what's the best way for people to support your mission? Um, I would love for people to donate their time, okay. their talents, or their resources. You know, any of those can help. So if you have some sort of skill or that you want to be behind the scenes and you can offer that, we can use it. If you want to learn how to teach and, and join one of our professional certification programs, we'd love to have you. If you happen to have, um, uh, you know, some, uh, whatever you can do. You have um, people that you can share what we do with. So you can share it with your coworkers, your family, your friends, whom, whomever. So sharing it is helpful. There are countless ways that people can help. And, and I firmly believe that every person can help move this mission forward in their own way. It doesn't have to be big, it can be small. Any specific skills you're looking for right now in volunteers? Oh, fundraising. <laughs> I mean, we worked hard to get mm -hmm. grants yep. uh, so that we can hire staff, so that we can make our instructor training uh, accessible to community members and our okay. trauma recovery program free mm -hmm. to participants. Um, but we need more. The okay. need is high. So, um, you know, you can donate on the website page. Okay. Uh, I mean, you could, if you wanted to, Throw a That's fundraiser. That's the uh, www.thesafetyteam.org. Mm -hmm. So please check that out. Um, and so, um, and then there's a way to engage there as like a volunteer. So if somebody has um, experience in the internet or yep. you know different ways that they can assist you guys, we have a volunteer page, so you can Perfect. check it out and get in touch. And that's absolutely wonderful. Well, this is great, ladies. I'm so glad you guys are doing this remarkable work. So. Um, you know, really quickly, that's how you get involved with the safety team. Um, can you guys let me know, uh, is there any last minute things you'd like to say to our viewers about the work that you do or um, how to be safe out there? Or uh, any, any kind of... Use your voice, <laughs> I would yeah. say. Yeah. You know, do the power walk. Uh, you know, I don't have any great advice. I would just say that you matter. Uh, you have a right to be safe. Um, and you have power in your body. Yeah. Those are the goals for our mm -hmm. workshops. We always started by saying, you have the right to be safe, to be respected, to take up space, and your body and your voice has a tremendous amount of power. That's wonderful. Well, with that, everyone, thank you so much for being with us here today. It's been a real pleasure. Um, and we'll see you back here next month. Take care. <laughs>